So hi everyone! In this video, we're going to link uh, our concept and our conception on short-run costs with long-run costs. And what you'll see is that long-run costs tend to behave as sort of like an envelope of the short-run costs and of the short-run costs rather. Now, if you recall from the past video, we said that short-run costs are there because uh, the in particular, uh, in short-run costs, there's an input or a part of the cost, of the total cost, which is fixed, i.e. there is a specific input in this case, in our two uh, input case of capital and labor, in our case, capital is held fixed. And in the short run, since capital is fixed, we then said that the firm cannot achieve okay, its cost minimization process uh, properly because it has one of these inputs fixed, so it cannot reallocate or uh, or adjust the input to the proper combination that would adhere to cost minimization. Now, what we're going to show today graphically is that we can derive okay the long run cost curve, which is essentially the cost curves we're familiar with, okay, using the short run, and that these long run costs, okay, these long run costs uh, can be act as sort of an envelope for these short run costs, and that the way that we derive them is somewhat intuitive, and uh, they're derived when we vary, okay, when we vary the level of the fixed input. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Say, for example, in our case, in the short run, we know that capital is fixed. So what happens okay, in the long run where you can start to change capital? So as again, in the long run, all inputs are variable. So capital can now change. So let's see that. Okay, so let's say we, um, we have our, to uh, our total cost function. So let's say in the short run, at an initial level of capital, we have this short run cost function, say this one. Okay, this is SC. And this uses the amount of capital K naught. Okay, say that was the case. Now, um, at the lowest, uh, at the at a point in this function, we're, we can derive the amount that is produced by the firm, and that's at Q0. Okay, now, Say, for example, capital was increased in a longer time frame. So say capital was increased to K1. Because of the increase in input, you would expect that cost would also increase. Okay, But the cost function may look something like this. Okay, So uh, let me redraw that something like this. So let's draw it nicely. So this could be S, your short run cost using K1. Okay, so notice uh, that short run cost now is more cubic than um, the first short run cost, which was just more convex. Okay, and what you'll notice is that um, again we can have an associated quantity from this. Say, uh, say we use this one. See, this is Q one. Then let's say in the uh, another short run time frame we adjust capital again and we can do that so we can further adjust and we may get something like this. Okay, so whoops, let me redraw. Okay, so say we have this one, S C uh, K two. Okay, so that uses another level of capital, and say um, we get this one, and we get an output level say Q. Uh, three, uh, say sorry, Q two since this is after one, two, and what you notice is at those points there, at those quantity production, what we can do is we can map out that uh, that pattern there, and draw the long run cost function, which is the actually the cubic uh, cost function, which is something like this, so. And like that. So you'll notice, so this is now our uh, cost function, and that's our total cost function. And you notice that it displays a similar behavior at the start, okay? Uh, the function is relatively more concave, then it has some inflection point at the middle, and it becomes more convex. So it sort of uh, exemplifies our properties for variable returns to scale, and it's the most realistic one that we have. Now, 
Apart from the total cost function, we also said that we could also um, determine uh, the marginal cost function and the average cost function. So uh, what you'll notice is that we do the same strategy. We vary, okay, we vary the level of capital again. So say we have one period first. So the short run average cost could look like this. So this could be short run average cost at K naught. Okay. Then it would have a corresponding marginal cost intersecting at the lowest point. Okay. And then you have SMC. K naught. SMC. Okay. Then say you varied capital again. So you're able to change capital in another time frame. Then you have this. Uh, S A C K one, then again M C intersects at the lowest point, so that's um this one here. So say it intersected, so that's S M C K one. And again, okay, at the lowest point, so this is at the lowest cost, so this is the cost minimizing option, right? So we will um produce Q here. At this one, and we will produce Q1 here. And to derive the long run cost average, uh, the long run average cost and the long run marginal cost, we link those lowest points together. So it will look something like this. So let's say we link it all together. So this will be your average cost. And at its lowest point, okay, what you'll notice is you will have the, okay, so say this was the lowest point you will have your marginal cost over there. So let's get a few things here. So if you notice at the minimum point of the AC curve, okay, so the minimum point, say this was the minimum, okay, say this point was the minimum, okay, the MC curve will cross the AC curve. So at this minimum point, at the minimum of AC, okay, you will notice that MC crosses the AC curve at one point only, and it's at that point. And at that point, okay, marginal cost is equal to average cost. And you'll notice that the short run average cost curve is tangent to the AC curve. What I mean, so if you notice this short run average cost curve, it's tangent, it's touching, okay, this uh, average cost curve. And the short run average cost, okay, for this level of capital is minimized at the same level of output as your average cost, which means that the short run marginal cost okay, will also intersect SAC at this point. So at this point here, okay, we know that MC is equal to AC by that first condition, but we also know that SAC is equal to SMC. Okay, so further in the short run, so this is since this is the point with the lowest cost out of all of them, okay, I will notice that. All of these uh, quantities here at marginal cost, average cost, short run average cost, and short run marginal cost are equal at this point. And that's how the short run and the long run costs are sort of linked. They sort of act as an and the long the long run costs sort of act as this envelope okay, for the short run costs. And uh, that's their specific relationship.